coming up tonight on our news. The education minister lashes out at critics of the Minnesota administration. We'll tell you why. The attorney representing former Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation employees speaks up on the lawsuit. It's a Good Friday tradition and our news is diving into seasonal fish sales. Plus, how you can make food your medicine. Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, in recent months, the Minnesota administration has come under heavy fire from critics who have blasted the government for laying off thousands of people, engaging in costly audits and being less than transparent on critical matters. But one outspoken cabinet minister is defending government and calling those critics ignorant and mischievous. Jasmine Brown reports. Education Minister Jeff Lloyd says anyone can see that all the Minnesota administration is trying to do is right the financial mess that it met when it came into office. He insists those who claim otherwise are creating issues where there are none. Those who claim that this is some kind of witch hunt is either ignorant or uh, being mischievous. Well, if I was another place, I would say it differently. But either ignorant or being mischievous. Finance Minister Peter Turnquest has accused the former government of leaving the cupboards bare due to gross overspending. Turnquest has said the remaining audits will be tabled during the budget debate this summer. While some say the audits are a waste of time and money, Lloyd disagrees. Any leader who enters into a new establishment or takes over an establishment and doesn't do a proper audit and a proper evaluation as to where you are and how you got there is a fool. Any manager, any leader who enters into an establishment for the first time with a new mandate, with a new charge, with a new responsibility given to them by the sovereign power in this country, the Bahamian people, and do not do a proper audit, a proper evaluation, not only of where you are, but how you got there, is a fool. It's our fundamental obligation of any leader, of any manager, to make sure that the establishment that they are leading or managing is properly guided by data. Not the seat of your pants or the whim of your fancy, but by data. And the only way that you can get that data is to do a proper evaluation and a proper audit so that you could know where you are, how you got there, and what you need to do in order to get to where the Bahamian people have mandated you to go. Right? I understand why, you know, they are naturally uh, concerned about these audits. I understand. And maybe if I was in their shoes, I would be concerned as well. And it disappoints me to hear Bahamians who seem to suggest that we should abandon this process and move forward. Since May 2017, more than 2,500 people were let go from the public service, which government officials have described as bloated. While critics have said the firings were politically motivated, Lloyd says there was no witch hunt. They talk about a witch hunt. If there are witches, and we won't know that unless we go hunting for whoever is there, we ought to be finding them out. Because witches have no place in the governance of the Bahamian society. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, former Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation Chairman Dion Smith and several of the BAIC's former employees will be moving ahead with plans to take legal action against the government after they were arrested on alleged theft charges weeks after the May 2017 general election. That's according to their attorney, Wayne Monroe, who recently gave an update on the matter. We have filed for, I think it's the employees so far. Um, I don't think we have filed for Mr. Smith yet. In early May, eight BAIC workers were arrested, part of a probe into theft by reason of employment at the corporation. While the workers were later released without charge, Smith, who is also the former Deputy Speaker of the House of Assembly under the previous Christie administration, was also taken into custody days later. He was also released after police ultimately determined that no wrongdoing occurred in that matter. 
Shortly after they were released, Monroe wrote to Attorney General Carl Bethel, charging that their arrest and detention was unreasonable, without foundation, a breach of their constitutional rights, and was due to their perceived political affiliation. In two separate letters to Bethel and BAIC, Monroe alleged that the arrests and detention of Smith and the eight employees and the ensuing police visits to their homes caused injury to their families. In the letters that were sent to the AG last August, Monroe inquired about the AG office's stance on the matter and warned that if he did not hear favorably from the AG, he was instructed to commence action against the government. After not getting that favorable response, Monroe says the legal team is going ahead with that action. We're at the point of doing the statement of claim. The Office of the Attorney General has entered an appearance, so we have to do the statement of claim. Then they will have 14 days to enter their defense, and then we'll go to case management to get a trial date. And 11 children and 14 women were among the 89 Haitian nationals charged for violation of the Immigration Act on Thursday. The migrants were charged in a court on Eleuthera one day after they were apprehended by the HMBS Cascarilla near Governor's Harbor. According to the Royal Bahamas Defense Force, the 89 migrants were all charged with illegal landing and pleaded guilty. Officials say the migrants were all deported yesterday. Opposition spokesman on immigration Fred Mitchell has insisted that it is not necessary for undocumented migrants to go before a magistrate, claiming that it could result in a nightmare for the judiciary and the prison system. In other news, with domestic violence continuing to be a major issue in the country, the Royal Bahamas Police Force has spent the last several months training some officers to deal with those cases. That's according to Superintendent Shanta Knowles, who says the force has teamed up with an international organization for the specialized training of nearly 100 officers. For the past few months, the Royal Bahamas Police Force has been working with the Pan American Development Fund in retraining our officers in ways of which to respond professionally, quickly and professionally, to calls of domestic violence. We have trained more than 90 officers thus far, and our training continues this year. Noel says police take domestic violence cases quite seriously. For that reason, she says they will partner with local groups to help bring awareness to the issue. We know that Domestic violence is a very serious problem within our community, in our country, and of course around the world. And that is why we thought it fitting to partner with all those who wish to partner with us and bring awareness to this, this kind of, of crime. Well, a big business during the Easter season usually centers around food. Hot cross buns and fish are big sellers, and local fishermen spend months preparing. Our Jillian Gray has more on this tasty entrepreneurial tradition. Fish on Good Friday is a local tradition, but for those who waited till the last minute to get the catch, you may find you're a bit out of luck. We just about sold out. Uh, we'll be heading back home in another day or so. And everything is good. You can't go back. We got nothing else. Not right now. So once this is gone, that's it. That's it. Almost every fish house is bought for me today. Yeah, we came in with like 1,300 bags, and I'm almost done. Most of the fishermen sell both retail and wholesale and have been busy for the past two weeks. Boats have been coming in every day for most of the week and by Wednesday they were all in port with sales rolling in from those eager not to be left out of this Easter tradition of fish and hot cross buns. Between snappers and goggle eye would be the two men going fish for the day. Snapper, snapper and goggle eyes, snappers and goggle eyes. We then sold out all our goggle eyes. And the snappers, everybody loves snappers. We do hogfish and, and the market fish and all that, but the Bahamian people just love the snapper, you know? What do you think is the best fish? To me, I go with the snapper. Yeah? I go with the snapper too. You're just like everybody else. I'm just like everybody else. <laughs> Crawfish and Kunk were also hot sellers heading into the holiday weekend. If you come to us, if you spend $60, we'll give you a bag free. If you buy $100 with a barracuda, we'll give you one or two free. Because we're working with the people. You know, it's the people's time. For those wondering where the tradition of eating fish on Good Friday comes from, it stems from the Roman Catholic custom of abstaining from eating warm-blooded animals to acknowledge and do penance for the death of Jesus. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jillian Gray. 
Thanks, Jillian. A little later, we'll tell you about some other traditional treats that have been baking up. Still to come on our news, how food can become your medicine. And did someone say hot cross buns? Our news takes a closer look after this break.